Uh, I know all about the CPS. I, I've been battling them since I got on air 16 years ago, and they hunt poor people. Um, it, the, they mainly, I'm just telling you, with black children, they get them, they, they drug them, they say they're special needs, and they get hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, on average, foster children in Texas, 68% of them are on seven different psychotropic drugs. Uh, that's also the national average. Uh, it, 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 well, it came out in New York Daily News five years ago that they take black children from their mothers and have them sign medical forms that will take the two-year-old if you don't give us the eight-year-old, and they actually test pesticides on them till they die. You cannot make this stuff up. Now, the, the, the CPS courts were set up in 1910, first in New York and then in Boston from the Rockefeller Foundation. Then Hitler picked it up in the 30s. It's a race um, uh, uh, hygiene is what they call them, courts. They're not real courts. That's how they can do what they do. The CPS are mercenaries. A lot of them are DynCorp uh, that also run child kidnapping operations worldwide where they actually have been caught running the sex slavery. So they call themselves officials. They're not. Most of them are private pedophile contractors and scum. And they've been caught over and over again. It's on record. Others are just mercenaries. Whether you work for the government or not, it is pure evil. It operates outside the Constitution. We're going uh, to um, Prince Leonard. Um, and, of course, uh, he and his wife um, had their home there at the place that he maintained. He lost his job as a welder uh, three and a half years before. And they came and took their children for the crime of being poor. The CPS said, yeah, we'll take you if you've got your kids' clothes in boxes. So we're going to be talking to them in a moment. And Bob Chapman will also have questions uh, riding shotgun with us here every Friday in the third hour of the International Forecast yeah, Family. As the economy goes into depression, they're going to take your children. It's happening everywhere. They're now locking people up in Sacramento, the homeless people. They won't let them stay in tents. They lock them up at night in a sports stadium. We reported on that two years ago. This is their program of control. Now, I spent the whole first hour on this uh, because of watching the media act like it's legitimate to take somebody's children. In this case, from what looked like a pretty nice house with a toilet, uh, dry toilet they put in, chemical toilet, uh, the uh, you know uh, computers, homeschooled, uh, they've got uh, uh, air conditioning. And he, I mean, I grew up around folks where the maintenance people, you know, lived in what you'd call a shack. Some of the best living in the world's done in that. Some of the most unhappy people in the world are living in mansions. But my point is, is this is the lawless evil of the CPS. Well, they will take your children for dirty dishes in the sink. When they're five times more likely than any other group to abuse children, according to the Justice Department, and the Time Magazine cover piece, The Shame of Foster Care. Now, enough from me. I want to introduce you to uh, the, the uh, activist, uh, Minister Quanell X, uh, who, who this happened a month ago, we've now learned, who finally got the media to cover it and has been helping uh, uh, Prince Leonard and his wife, uh, his six children. And um, who should speak first, uh, uh, Mr. Leonard or uh, Mr. X? It's uh, Robert Quanell. Well, I just want to say thank you, Mr. Jones, for allowing Mr. Leonard and I to come on your radio show this afternoon. We are grateful. And I also want to commend you for challenging and going after CPS because the things that you said about it earlier is absolutely right. The only reason why Mr. Leonard's family have had their children snatched and taken away from them is strictly because in the eyes of a CPS investigator, their living conditions were not conducive to her liking, so they took the children. These children are A and B honor roll students, never had one disciplinary report in school. They were not abandoned. They were not neglected. There was no allegations of drug or alcohol abuse or molestating allegations, none of that. They strictly said that because you are poor and your standard of living does not meet the CPS investigators' liking, they took all six of this man's children and his wife's children. And they called him at his job. His wife called, and she told him what was going on. And unfortunately, there was nothing he could do at the time. But the reason they have given everybody, including myself, is they were poor. They were not living in a dangerous environment, just poor. And the Leonard's moved out of a dangerous environment and 
lived in their car because they were in a housing complex where drugs and alcohol and prostitution and gang violence was running rapid, so the kids couldn't go outside and play. By the and way, I've seen on people. Google Video uh, and Google Earth, there's like forest, woods, there's a big fence around the RV boat slash container park, a big area for children to play, some tattletale, saw kids playing behind a fence and called CPS to begin with. And we did actually talk to uh, some of the people when they first lost his job when they were in a shelter. And a lot of these places are hellish, so he did the only thing a father could do. He didn't go on welfare. He kept working and was saving money and, 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 and literally built them a home. That's the American way, I thought. And that's the most important thing that everybody needs to understand here. Mr. Leonard refused to take food stamps. He refused to apply for welfare. He refused to apply for housing. His position was, just so long as I'm healthy and able to work, I'm going to work until my change comes. Why punish this man when CPS suggested he should apply for welfare and food stamps and housing, but he didn't want government assistance. He wanted to do it for himself, and now they've taken this man's children. Unbelievable. So, so continuing here, uh, uh, bringing uh, Mr. Leonard on, tell us about your wife, your children, how long it's been since you've seen your six d d darling children who just have, you know, have electric energy in their eyes. They don't look like these, uh, you know, mainline Prozac head kids that are out there. Uh, I mean, describe what you've been through and, and where this is going, because I'm now told uh, due to attention that you ha you are getting a home, but CPS, they don't like to be proven wrong. Uh, that is a nicer home or something more to their godlike liking. Uh, and so we don't know yet if you are going to be getting your children back right now. Uh, and supposedly you're going to be meeting with them in about an hour. Yes, sir. Well, so they came two days before Father's Day. Took my children. I was at work and my wife uh, called me on the job and uh, she was telling me about CPS taking our children and I was like, wait a minute, uh, ask the lady her name. She told her her name and then I say, um, actually give some paperwork and she says she's going to take our children to make sure that that's who she's with. She didn't want to give my wife the paperwork so I told her to call 911. She called 911 and the police came and finally she gave my wife a piece of paper. And uh, so uh, it's been, our life has been uh, upside down. You know, it's the house, it's the house we stand, the place we stand in is quiet, no children. You know, a lot of times we sit and look at the pictures or, or look at the wall and say, you know, just thinking about them. What, but I, I, I've often thought about this. Having my three children torn away, I, I don't think I could control myself. I mean, what was the horror like when they tore them away? What did your little ones go through? Uh, they were crying. Like, uh, my daughter told me that my, my, my two-year-old, which is my youngest one, he cried all the way from the place to the... Uh, to the grandparents' house, and uh, he cried a, a long time. You know, he was uh, nursing. You know, and they just stripped him away from my wife. My wife asked him for a breast pump, and they said they was gonna get one, but they never got a breast pump. I could count on my hand on one hand how many times they they uh, they, they, they 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 called us and talked to us. They never did that. Uh, they didn't do nothing. They didn't try to help us out. They didn't offer us nothing. They said we're gonna take your children away from you. Well, it, you know, the good news is at least they are with the grandparents, but you never know what the CPS will do now. Uh, and, and, and that's another point. Why just take the children away? Uh, why not then uh, offer you some help? Well, that's the question. My wife asked her like five, well, I was on the phone. She asked the lady five times, you know, will you help us? Will you help us? We, went, we told people at the public school lot issues, and uh, they asked us, if we offer you help, will you accept it? We said yes, but nobody never helped us. So we had to do for ourselves, and that's what we—that's what I've been doing. I, I, I work, and I work, and I work, and just keep, just keep working. And uh, one day, you know, one of these good days, I have me a place for my family, and this could be behind us now. That's how we looked at it. But in the meantime, we're not going to do nothing illegal. We're not going to do nothing wrong. We're just going to do it how we're supposed to do it until we get us a place. Well, describe for people, sir, how all this began. I mean, I mean, how you uh, how you ended up having to uh, move into the storage facility, but it had air conditioning, a toilet, everything. I mean, I saw the video; it looked pretty, pretty nice. Your children look extremely happy. I mean, since when is that a crime? I don't know. We um we uh we lived there. We left there at the apartment complex. What was going on? There was a lot of drugs being sold, and the police were kicking in doors. And so uh, I was like, well, I don't think I want to stay anymore. But we stayed there for like uh, I think two years. And we uh and every six months they would go up on the lease, but they wouldn't improve the place. And uh, we had issues with rats and roaches. And uh, so I so, so we uh after my lease was up, 
my wife and I, we left out of this place, out of this apartment complex. So we stayed in the car a little while so we could figure out what is it that we want to do. So we started staying in this, uh, this here boat and RV storage, and we fixed it up so it'll be livable. That's what we done. Well, living in a big empty RV uh, boat area with uh, with uh, basically a park there, it's so big. That sounds like a great place with children behind a fence safe than uh, living in some uh, crack-infested den. I want to bring uh, the uh, activist who's brought this uh, story out to people uh, up here, uh, Mr. Uh, X here, uh, Quan L. X, sir. Um, now we're told, though, that people have stepped forward and he is going to get a home. But obviously, uh, uh, tell us where that's going, but uh, what the CPS is acting like, how they're behaving right now. Well, there, we have successfully gotten them a place to stay that's more decent and more palatable to CPS's liking because they say they want them somewhere else. Well, we've gotten them that. What the family's in need of now is furniture, or appliances, uh, taking care of six children is hard, down on your luck. They need as much as they possibly can to make their home now where they're going to be going a very palatable, acceptable place for them to live. But remember, CPS could come in and say, well, you don't have enough food in the refrigerator or you have too many unclean dishes that's not being washed consistently. See, some of these CPS investigators are very arrogant, disrespectful to poor people. Yes, they have placed the children with grandparents, but now I'm being told by a CPS source they're going to do a home study on the grandmother. And if the grandmother is viewed to be too old or if she's currently on medication or she has some disabilities because of the ages of the children, no, that's they'll him. take them from the grandparent and place them in foster care. No, that's no, that's the how they always work. To make themselves look reasonable, they'll do that at first, then they'll white glove inspect. For those that don't know, at West Point, they put white gloves on and go around the light bulbs and go under things. If any dirt gets on the glove, you fail. And then meanwhile, the CPS people, it's like awesome. They give you $3,000 a day fines for three-inch grass. And then I go to the city buildings. They got two-foot grass, and council members got foot-tall grass. You know, I've, I've, I've shown those video reports to folks, and, and it's really caused a stir. Total hypocrisy. So we need to get the, uh, folks some financial support. Uh, and and uh, obviously legal support is now coming so that they can't win this victory. People say, well, they're grabbing millions of kids uh, overall every year. You know, the point is this has gotten attention and we can't let this story get attention and then the children basically be completely taken away. As you were just saying, we've got to stand up and uh, you know, show people what needs to be done. Um, what's coming up today in about an hour at the CPS meeting? We have a meeting in an hour with CPS to discuss the terms and conditions of reuniting the family. And if the family meets the terms and conditions that CPS puts before us today, they're saying they will reun reunite the family. But I don't trust these terms and conditions. I'm going to scrutinize these terms and conditions. And if I find them to be unacceptable, we'll tell them to take them and we'll fight them in court. And we'll fight them in a court of public opinion and we'll organize as many people as we possibly can to fight CPS because sometimes they'll put terms and conditions on families that are absolutely unreasonable and unattainable. This man. Yeah, they'll do things like you got to pay $2,000 a month, and I've seen it higher, to go to all these family classes. You got to drive all these places. We're going to come in and inspect you every week. And then they find one thing they don't like. Then you've signed an agreement. They take your kids forever. Right. Absolutely. No, no. I mean, it, listen, they have bounties on children. They're not there to help children. Are there some social workers that aren't evil? In some cases. But the overall system is predatory. It's on record. Um, now, I'm told that there is an account number. You guys didn't even bring this up to me, but I'm bringing it up. I'm told that there is an account number uh, for people. And, and I'm going to say right now, since other folks are helping, and, and, and now that there's a home, I was saying I was ready to go get him a place rented and put $10,000 down so, so he would have close to a year of it paid. But I'm, uh, I'm going to give $5,000 of my money because folks tied to these corrupt churches who, you know, buy big swimming right. pools and the rest of it. You're supposed to tithe to widows and the poor and people that are in trouble. So it's real charity, not the government with strings attached. I'm going to give $5,000. Uh, Monday, because my accountant who who wired, I'm too dumb to do it myself. Uh, is I guess I got to have my wife do it. I'm going to wire five thousand on Monday. In fact, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to I'm going to do it today. 
I'm going to wire five thousand today uh, into this account, and I would ask everybody else to to you know to wire five ten dollars into this account, or if there's a mailing address uh, to uh, help Mr. Leonard uh, because he didn't go on welfare. He he he, he built this home, you know he he uh, he did what rugged Americans are supposed to do. And, and we need to stand up to the CPS and say, it's not illegal to be poor. It's not illegal to not want to live in government housing. It's not illegal to want to raise your own children where human beings uh, treat us like that. Uh, what are the uh, best places to send contributions? Mr. Lenny, give them the account number. It's okay. Uh, Bank of America, 488-029-6000. Uh, please say that two more times from the start, starting again. Four eight eight zero two nine six seven eight six one one. That's four eight eight zero two nine six seven eight six one one. And folks, a lot of you are going to say, what is it going to do to help one family? If we all started finding people in our street or our neighborhood or like when I was a child, my parents really did this so I'd know how good I had it, taking me down many Christmases to be at the Salvation Army in South Dallas and to feed people and to do things like that at those soup kitchens, uh, if that is what it's all about, if Americans started acting like this even two days a month, and if you gave your money, and churches aren't going to like this, to people individually, like I've you know bought people medical beds, done things like that, stuff people never hear about. The point is, you uh, charity starts at home, and it's time for us to do this, not this big corrupt bureaucracy that's supposed to take care of us, that is nothing but a eugenics murder arm with a bunch of compartmentalized idiots that don't even know what they're doing. Bank of America, it's Prince um, Leonard. 4880 uh, We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with more. We'll get some comments from Bob Chapman. They'll do five minutes of overdrive with Bob Chapman. For Chapman, who will do five more minutes of us into emergency overdrive, internet only at InfoWars.com to cover some other news. When our guests leave us here in a few minutes to, to ask any questions he's got. But I want to point out that uh, you can go to, and I'm the one that recommended this, it's not added yet. QXJustice.com, uh, that's the uh, activist, uh, Mr. X's uh, website, is community activist in Houston, who I've actually read about before. Uh, and uh, he's going to add the, the number there on the site to the Bank of America uh, account. I think that's very important to do. Uh, by the way, talking to him during the break, they took the children to state doctors, tried to dig up some dirt. They have nothing else to take the children away for. First, they were in the news when this broke on for July 4th, a month after it had happened saying that uh, the children were taken because the house, uh, you know, what was, was too cramped and wasn't nice. Uh, now they're saying, well, there might be some other things. So they're really trying to cover their hind end, but they don't have anything else. And I cannot describe to you how evil CPS is from my own experience and how ruthless and how outside the Constitution they are. Bob Chapman, what's your take uh, listening to all of this? Well, we've been through this on the program a couple of times before, but we've never had an incident where they've gone in and taken a whole family of children out, and for very spurious reasons. And um, uh, that's unusual. Um, I think, too, uh, minority communities should get together and fight this sort of thing. Uh, they actually have a little bit more leverage than we do, they certainly don't have the money that we might have, but the point is that uh, they they can make themselves heard. And they got to start thinking about that. And they can work with this activist gentleman in doing things like that to make sure well, that this doesn't happen again. That's why I love going to you, Bob, because you bring up points that I meant to bring up. Where is the black community when, and I don't mean to get off into this, but this is part of it, when 52% of blacks are never born and are aborted, when the CPS just has a free hand in these communities, institutionalizing these children for a future in prison once the state gets them, uh, where is the NAACP? Where are all these organizations? Or are, are they out there speaking out against this? And is the media covering it up, uh, Minister? Civil rights organizations have become really just country clubs with membership to attend banquets 
seminars and functions. They are no longer playing the role of activist groups like they were in its inception. That's problem for as black organizations go. But then the African American community, many of us are being lulled off to sleep by what's happening with CPS because many of our political elected leaders never speak out against CPS. Not one African American elected official has come to the assistance or the aid of the Leonard family. They all know what's going on in this city with the Leonard family, but none of them have said anything to the Leonard family or attempted to try to help because they themselves are in so, so intertwined with the system and seeing CPS as a state governmental license agency, they are closing their eyes to what this license kidnapping group is doing. And African-American children and minority children are the number one children set upon for kidnapping by CPS. And until there's an uprising from the grassroots community of the African-American community, hold black leaders accountable for their yes. efforts in doing nothing about this. It won't change. Absolutely. Gentlemen, we'll obviously have to check in with you next week as things develop. Uh, we're all going to pray for you because if we don't hang together, we'll surely hang separate. But finishing up with Mr. Leonard, uh, sir, uh, I'm, I bet you're feeling a little bit better now thanks to Mr. X and and. Uh, others that have come to your aid uh, than you felt a month ago when they first kidnapped your children. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. I love the brother. All right. Well, we're here with you to defend the family, and we appreciate uh, you gentlemen joining you uh, joining us. I'll say bye to you during this one-minute break.